No skin, faith, and religious beliefs. Corn they roared, invoking the sacred battle name of Karnath, the blood god, lord of battles. Corn they howled, until it seemed the walls must fall from the violence of their voices alone. Corn they shrieked as they gnashed their teeth and bit their shields. From the destruction of Visborg. Norskan religion is based primarily around the worship of the Chaos Gods which are venerated by various local aspects and names both similar to and distinct to those they are known by to the scholars and priests of the Empire. Commonly, the Norskans, like the other human races who dwell around the Chaos Wastes, venerate all the Chaos Gods in a single pantheon as a purely practical consideration in order to draw upon all of the gifts and powers of the four gods in order to better survive in the harsh north. In spite of this, there are many tribes that do in fact take a single chaos god to be their patron, who is then seen as both the father and protector of that tribe. Commonly, that god is also the patron of the chieftain. In the vast majority of Norse tribes, Korn takes up this position, as he is by far the most popular choice of patron deity in the battle-torn North. In addition to the Chaos Gods themselves, the Northmen religion also incorporates various demon princes, fallen chaos champions, revered ancestors and various other lesser spirits into its traditions. Despite the presence of these additional deities, however, it is always the chaos gods alone are ever present and who receive the highest degree of veneration, being the core set of deities Norse religion revolves around. The Norskans have worshipped the Dark Gods since times immemorial. The tribes simply have no concept of how to live otherwise. Far from being mindless slaves to darkness, the men of the North merely maintain that beings as powerful as the Chaos Gods simply operate on a level beyond mere human judgement or understanding and are thus entitled to reward or destroy as befits their divine inclination. Just as it is the charge of a man to pay them homage and passionately strive for their favour, the Norsemen believe the path they have taken is the only one that is pure and true, and thus look down upon the gods of the southern lands, seeing them as corrupt, weak, and wicked things that are beneath contempt and worthy only of mockery. In the Norskan faith, there is no equivalent to the kingdom of Mor. There is nothing after death save the realms of the Dark Gods, and men shall only enter those domains to sit at the right hand of their gods if they were strong and true warriors in life. For cowards are cursed by the gods and reviled for all eternity. Thus, every Norskan fights with an insane fervour driven by this belief, which moulds them into the perfect warriors of the Dark God. In battle, the Norse look to Korn, the war god, for strength, 
The Blood God is renowned in Norsken sagas as an embodiment of strength and a granter of victory. And so, thousands upon thousands of Norse warriors are dedicated to his savage creed of wanton bloodshed. Amongst the Norse, the most common name for the Blood God is Karnath, meaning Lord of Rage, in the dark tongue of chaos. But other names are also prevalent amongst the tribes, such as Akar, Korn, the Brass Lord of Battle, and etc. Seers and Vitki take Zinch, the Raven God, as their patron, and beseech the changer of the ways to aid them in their witchery, and to one day grant them preeminence over the warrior kings who lead the tribes. As most Norsken spellcasters are chaos sorcerers of a sort, channeling the black wind of Dahar to power their profane divination, it is common for them to take at least one or more of the Dark Gods as their patrons, and most commonly, this patron is Zinj, due to his association with magic and sorcery. For the most part, however, Zinj is distrusted by most Norskins, particularly warriors, for his cunning ways, yet as he is also seen as the god of wind and tide, most Norskins will strive for his favour before taking to their longships, in order to ensure a safe voyage. In times of plague and famine, the Norse offer sacrifices to Nurgle, to placate the crow god and to persuade him to withhold his blessings. Some tribes dedicate themselves to the Plague Father in such occasions, however, believing that only through fighting in his name shall they be delivered from the ruinous touch of Nurgle's contagions. Svanesh, the Great Serpent, is prey to in the aftermath of battle for fulsome feasting and celebration. He is also prey to for fertility and virility and is invoked in some tribes' marriage ceremonies. There is also a very strong element of ancestral worship to the Norse religion that cannot be overlooked. Indeed, the veneration of the ancestors is a tradition as old as the worship of the chaos gods themselves to the Norsemen, and one from which they too derive their strength and fierce codes of honour. Though they dominate the Norse pantheon, the Dark Gods are certainly not alone amongst the numbers of the dread Norsken deities. For example, there is Myrmidas, a demonic sea deity and lesser idol of chaos believed by scholars to be a chaotic reflection of the sea god Manan who is venerated amongst ferocious scaling sea raiders. The scaling marauders make human sacrifices to the abominable god by weighing the prisoners they take in battle with leaden weights before throwing them into the ocean to drown in the sea god's dread embrace. When a warrior dies at sea, it is said that he now wears the chains of Myrmidus, and so is his soul taken forever in that god's servitude, forever deprived the honour of feasting with the ancestors in the lofty halls of the four great gods. Thus, the scaling sea god is as reviled amongst the Norse as he is respected as the lord of wind and tide. 
Curiously, while there exists a clear antipathy for the gods of the south due to their belief in the gods of the north, some Norskans nonetheless believe in deities with clear parallels to some worshipped in the old world, Myrmidas being one of them. However, some sources indicate the worship of a lesser deity known as Ulrich, who appears to be a Norskan version of the deity Ulrich, albeit one far more savage and brutal. The Norskans see themselves as the closest of all the races of men to the Dark Gods, and thus see it as their duty and right to raid and ravage. Thus they raid not only the South, but also their fellow worshippers of Chaos, the Kurgan and Hung to the East. Many Norskan warbands also make journeys into the Chaos Wastes, to hunt the abominable creatures of that land and show their might to their infernal masters. Indeed, among some tribes, there is a tradition of leaving a child on his thirteenth year at the shores of the wastes with only bare necessities and a single weapon. If he is able to survive for a week, he is returned and made a man of the tribe. If he manages to bring back the head of a chaos spawn or a beast man, then he is made a warrior then and there. The Norse see themselves as honorable men, mighty and courageous, and for this strength of will and sinew, they honor their dark gods. The Norsemen see the blessings of their gods as gifts that allow them to better stand against the unimaginable perils of their homeland. As all the Norsemen are, to some extent, affected by the touch of chaos, they are constantly reminded of the presence of their gods and are ever vividly reminded of their potency. In comparison, the gods of the south, such as Ulrich, Sigmar, and Mermidia, are but pale, pitiful children before the might of the Dark Lords of the North. The Norse believe the world as they perceive it, the realm of flesh and blood and material, is a prison, an illusion created by the Dark Gods in order to test them, and that the true world is the realm of chaos, the ever-changing, ever-mutable domain of the Dark Gods. The Norse believe that it is only through the gifts of the Dark Gods that they shall be able to penetrate this veil of the senses and peer into the true reality. When a Norseman receives a mutation, the rewards of the Chaos Gods, they believe that it is the hand of the gods stripping away the illusion about them and thus revealing to them their true self. In simpler terms, they are gaining a glimpse of reality. When a seer conjures forth a demon, it is again seen as a fleeting glimpse of the true world. Some scholars have theorized that Norska's extremely close proximity to the Chaos Waste lends itself to this way of thinking. The Shadowlands are strange and ever-changing. An ordinary boulder may stay in one spot for a thousand years, only to pick itself up one day and move to another spot. Birds may fly through the cold mountain air at one point and then land and slither across the ground as a snake the next. Storms come and go without warning, and the very stars seem to writhe and change. 
Norska is a land in constant flux, abiding by no laws, lending a dreamlike quality to this wild land. To a Norseman, it is a no great leap of logic to assume that the mutations and rewards of chaos are gifts of the chaos gods, a mark of divine favor granted to set the chosen apart from the mundane. As the realm of flesh is but a dream, it is the goal of every Norseman to reach the truth, the true realm beyond this grey, ashen existence, the realm of the Dark Gods. Death and glory is the doorway to the land beyond, and a man can only make the journey through it by proving himself in the dream. In order to prove one's worth, he must have been a powerful warrior in life, who died a heroic death, slaughtering many foes, attaining glory and the marks of the Chaos God's divine favor. Those who beg for mercy, who cling to the realm of the living, are found wanting and cursed to walk the world forever as disembodied spirits. Others are tormented for all eternity by demons and reborn as slaves, women, or worst of all, old worlders. Thus it is warriors who occupy the most prestigious echelons of Norse society, for they alone can attain the glory that awaits them beyond the mortal world. The rest are condemned to spend their days in the dream, never to know the dark paradise that might be there. This belief has molded the men of Norska into vicious and powerful warriors who thirst after the chance to make war for the glory of chaos, for there is no greater glory than to fight and die in the armies of the immortals and to join their holy number. In general, the Norse tend to revere corn the Skull King and Lord of Battles, more fanatically than the other gods, for the simple, brutal strictures of the Blood God's faith are pleasing to the warlike Norse, and the behaviour of the various Norse tribes in Norska, as well as the terrible troll country, dovetails neatly with what the Blood God expects from his followers. As a result, many tribes of Norska take Korn as their sole patron, and most Chaos Shrines dedicated to him are found within Norse settlements. The Norskans also maintain a unique tradition in their version of Kornet worship, holding up the veneration of the demon princess Falkiar the Bloody. According to Norse sagas, she was once a fearsome warrior queen of one of the tribes of Norska, who was risen from her tribe to become the shield maiden of the blood god and the bringer of glory. Korn's consort, who chooses the valiant dead, who are to enter into the halls of the blood god to fight on for all eternity. Many times in the past, Falkia has returned to the mortal plane to lead the Norskans to battle, and in her presence, the grim warriors of the north fight even harder. For where Falkia flies, the axe father watches, and to any Norskan, the prospect of becoming his chosen is a prize beyond all measure. Indeed, the Norskans' utter devotion to Korn is a dark thing of terrifying fanaticism, for they have gone above and beyond 
the call of their gods demand for eternal warfare. Thus many Norse tribes spend their days raiding up and down the coastlines of the Empire and beyond to gather skulls to honour the Blood God. An example of the Norsken cornered zealotry is of the Gore Hunt tribe, who in late 2103 IC resolved to offer up the skulls of far off lands unto the Blood God and took to the seas on their longships, heading to the south. The Norskans eventually came across the desert kingdom of Araby. Though the tribe was less than a hundred strong, the Norsemen were truly blessed by corn, and carved a bloody path of devastation throughout the land battering aside the many thousand-strong armies of the emirs of Araby. At last, the rulers of that kingdom sent an army so great it hid the very dunes of the desert with its passing, and numbered great creatures of magic in its number. But the berserking Norsemen fought on with an iron resolve and annihilated the army spilling so much blood it ran in a mighty river throughout the desert kingdom. Though every Norskan of the Gore Hunt tribe was slain, their strength and devotion pleased Korn greatly, and he willed it so that the river of blood they spilled would forever run through Araby as a testament to their devotion. The Seers and Shamans. The only men the gods speak to are Seers, and they pay a terrible price for this gift. From Einar Steelfist Sigdanson, Champion of Z. The holy men of Norse society are the seers, or vitki as they are referred to in Norskan. Admittedly, many of these shamanistic spellcasters are chaos sorcerers who draw upon the power of the dark gods to fuel their divination. These priests are often the advisers of the mighty Norse chieftains and wield great authority over the tribes due to their status as the mouthpiece of the Chaos Gods. With but a word can a Vitki order the death of any man, and thralls die brutally by the score in order to seal the demonic pacts and empower foul rituals by which they draw upon the dark power of chaos. Steeped in the arcane traditions of the ruinous powers, it falls to these privileged men and women to interpret the movements of the winds of chaos, the whispers of demons, and the spirits of fallen warriors in order to guide the Jarl to choose the proper path for the tribes, one of blood, glory, and conquest. Amongst the many, many Norse clans who are dedicated solely to the bloody-minded worship of Korn, Another tradition of divination exists, one that abides by the strength of steel rather than the addled whispers of sorcerers, the terrible blood fathers. These warlike holy men are solitary by nature, and many deign to attend to the shrines and holy places of corn in isolation the majority of which located in Norska, but also others further afield. They are rightly considered 
legendary amongst the northern tribes, for many among them bear the mark of corn, a sign of their lord's favour. Furthermore, it is whispered amongst the Norsemen that such is their strength and skill that no man can best a blood father of corn in battle, for there is no trick of axe or sword that the blood god has not revealed unto them. The dreams of the blood fathers touch ever so with the sanguine realm of corn, granting them visions of scarlet yesterdays and crimson tomorrows, visions of battle that allow them to advise their chieftains to the path of corn's favour, and the blood fathers of Norska often boast that the divining cantrips of sorcerers is precious little compared to the visions granted by a god. Norskans observe various customs and rituals before battle, done in order to prepare themselves for the fight and to gain the favour of the Dark Gods. The bloody sacrifice of a thrall to the Great Powers is an extremely common practice, but it is by no means the only one. Most battle customs involve terrifying and complex rites, such as the symbolic spilling of blood, consuming the flesh of chaos, and even ritual combat between two warriors. In some tribes, there exists a truly horrific ritual to consume the power of chaos. They first take a living beastman drain its blood into an iron cauldron brought to a boil, and then add various hallucinogenic substances and herbs into the repulsive fluids. Next, the warriors drop locks of their hair into the concoction. Once all the war band have contributed, the sorcerer hands around a skull filled with the liquid. Each warrior drinks from the skull down to the dregs, believing that ingesting the blood will allow them to receive visions from their gods. Death. He's taken his father's hand. A Norskan saying, meaning that a fallen warrior has taken his seat in the halls of the Dark Gods. Death is of no fear for a Norseman. No true son of the Dark North fears to escape the prison of flesh, to enter the realm of the Dark Gods in honour and to dwell within their halls. For many Northmen, the greatest fate is that the shield maiden of the Blood God herself shall carry them to fight on in the halls of Corn, where a glorious hereafter of eternal battle awaits them. Their measure is taken by the moment of their deaths, by the blood they shed and the foes they have slain, and the gods are said to look well upon men who fight the hopeless fight. Thus it is said that Norsemen never retreat, for to do so is the epitome of weakness, and the dark gods of the North have little mercy for those who are weak, and such souls are doomed to be shamed and tormented in the afterlife. It is strength alone the evil gods of Norska exult, and they are pleased by those who slay with power and who die with honour. 
A warrior's saga is said to begin in death, and so each Northman strives to make it so that their doom is of such glory and blood that it is worthy of remembrance. For no father can respect a son who does not find an end nobler than his own, and would sooner spit on him from the halls of the Dark Gods. The Norsemen have an acute obsession with death, equally that of their enemies as much as their own. Theirs is a culture that exalts and embraces that which is brutal and deadly, values the masculine and strong, and which teaches men to be reckless with death. This affords them a clear psychological advantage over their enemies, for where the men of the South and East might fear the pain of their death, the Norskans embrace it as the only road to the true realm beyond the waking dream of flesh. Amongst the Norsemen, it is an unthinkable fate for a man to die without holding his weapon, for how can the gods permit him to enter their halls when he cannot prove he met his end in battle? A far worse affront is for a warrior's corpse to be dismembered of his hands, for how is he to grip his sword and shield in the eternal battlefields of the Dark Gods without a hand to clasp around the handle of his blades? Indeed, to desecrate a corpse in such a way is a grave crime amongst the Norse, sure to drive them to seek vengeance from the perpetrator no matter the cost. The Norse possess many complex rituals to honour those who find their way to tread the paths of the realm of chaos. By far the most well known is to place a dead warrior upon a longship and burn it to the sea. This is a prestigious thing and is reserved only for chieftains and mighty champions. By placing a warrior upon a ship, it is believed that his soul shall rise with the flames to be sent on his way to the Dark Gods. Among the Norsemen, it is considered a tiding of great doom to wage war while a warrior is committed to the gods in this way. For to fight in the shadow of unquiet souls is an omen of ill fortune. It is often customary to recite the dark and brutal deeds of the fallen, that the gods might know who it is that comes to their halls. Another similar funerary practice, run reserved for warriors who fall in battle, is to place them upon a burning pyre. Their fires are believed to carry the spirit of the dead warrior high to the halls of the Dark Gods, where they shall tell their tales to their honoured fathers and share their stories of victory and war with the other great warriors and kings of ancient days. All around their pyres, their shield brothers gather to give a great shout into the sky, bringing their axes and swords to hammer against their shields while they roar and bellow the names and bloody feats of valour of those who have fallen, that the gods of the north might know they who come to take their place at their lofty tables. Norse funerals are no somber, self-important affair as they are in the South. Those who have fallen are honoured and revered, their pyres no commiseration of death, but rather a celebration of their lives. Those who die are revered and hailed, 
for their saga is now completed, and shall be joined to that of the greater tribe, and in turn that of the Norse people themselves. Marauder and Chosen, Herdsman and King alike are honoured thus, and through this they shall live forever. Not only in the immortal realms beyond flesh, but in the memories of those who will come after them. The end.